everyone, Robert Faringo with Doc Sports here with Raphael Esparza bringing you your college hoops handicapping extravaganza on Tuesday, February 22nd, 2022. Tuesday, 2 22 Hopefully that means good luck today for us, Raphael, right? Like, I feel like we all should have only had two unit plays at Doc Sports to celebrate this uh, anachronistic, I don't know, palindromistic. I don't know. It's a weird day. It's a weird day. Uh, how how did you make out this weekend, Raphael? And how do you feel uh, about handicapping college basketball now as we're as we're getting close to March Madness, one of the busiest betting times on the sports betting calendar? You know how it is. You win some, you lose some. How come there's no bet number of two 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 today in any of the cards? Uh, NHL, college hoop, soccer. How come there's no rotation number of two 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 out of mortgage to house? on bet number 222 and got divorced on 22222 uh, on the same day would have been a great uh, parlay. But college basketball, this is a weird time because you you don't want to really blow your bankroll if you're if you're up or down because you got March Madness come around. We have conference tournaments, which I think is probably bigger now these days and almost equal to the first four days of, of March Madness in general. So it's kind of like hit or miss because some of these games – uh, don't really mean anything if if you're a, a top seed in a conference playing a lower seed. You're just trying to stay healthy for conference tournaments, and maybe if you're already for sure going to the dance. So it's like I said, it's been hit or miss in college baskets. Uh, I think you can find some really really good value on some totals right now if you know some of these games maybe not mean anything for some of them. Uh, some of them defense is going to be very very crucial. We'll talk about defense, especially on one of the games we're talking tonight, uh, which I think is going to be a great defensive battle. So. Uh, college basketball is, is sadly, I can't believe it's coming to the end because baseball still hasn't gotten their head out of their asses, which, which I'm usually jonesing for some baseball right now. But I don't want college basketball to end. Yeah, I'm with you. I feel like things are just starting to pick up steam. I feel pretty good about the way I'm seeing the board right now as well. So I, I wish there were two months left. But you know what? We're playing the hand that we're dealt. And, uh, you know, speak, you mentioned defense. One of the better defensive teams in the SEC is coming off a monster defensive effort. Florida. Pulling the huge upset Saturday over Auburn. Very emotional win Saturday. It was a game Florida needed to have. Now, they're a team that we've covered a lot in the, these college hoops handicapping extravaganzas. Uh, and they've been a disappointment, frankly, every time. I, I've been saying for months that this team is better than it has played, that the talent level is better than its record suggests. But, you know, every time I get leaning on them in one of these videos, it seems like they come up short. Q last Saturday, they get that marquee win. Let me ask you, do you think that they played at home on Saturday, had that big emotional come from behind last second win, now they're a pick at home against Arkansas coming off its own big win in Tennessee. When you look at Florida, Raphael, do you see the potential for a letdown after that big win uh, over Auburn? Or do you think that momentum can kind of build up for this team and carry them through in this one? I smell letdown. I mean, yeah, ooh, they beat Auburn, yay! But they're still one and five against the spread in their last six games. They're still on back-to-back -back losses. Last time uh, we saw them with a really marquee game. Yeah, not saying Auburn's not a marquee game, but Kentucky beat them down by double digits on the road. I just like the way Arkansas uh, has been playing. I I'm waiting to see if I can get plus one. Like you said, it's pick them. You know, this one's probably going to stay BC, either minus one Florida or pick them. If I can get plus one, I might jump. On the Razorbacks, uh, I, I was burned on the Razorbacks off of football season, and now I'm, I've been burned on them. I like them tonight, so I, I like Arkansas. Hopefully, they get that plus one, maybe one and a half. I highly doubt it, but I think letdown game for Florida. All right, the home team has dominated the series, and Florida has dominated the series. They're seven and two against the spread in the last nine meetings with Arkansas. The home team has won seven of the last ten meetings. We know Arkansas has that great home court advantage. Uh, the favorite is eight and one against the spread in the last nine meeting. Now it's a pick, so neither one is, is kind of favored here, but I, do you think the money is gonna come in late on the ranked Arkansas team, or do you think that people are gonna are gonna jump on the home team in this one? Uh, I think Joe Public would jump on the home team because they're gonna open up their newspaper or open up the ESPN app and say, ooh, Florida beat Auburn last week. I'm gonna jump all over Florida because that's what the, uh, Joe Public usually does on this one. That's why I'm hoping to maybe get plus one, one and a half uh, on the Razorbacks, uh, on that one. I'm going to wait. I'm looking to uh, go against all those spreads or against the spread stats that you just laid out. I'm leaning towards Arkansas on this one. But I can guarantee you Joe Public uh, will probably be all over Florida. I don't think we'll see that much wise guy action. I think if we would have, 
we would have probably saw it when Arkansas was minus one. I'm not saying that, that they quickly moved it to pick them. Some shops actually had Florida at one earlier this morning. I, I didn't see that much wise guy action where we're going to see a huge, huge, huge swing on this one. There's other key marquee games that I see uh, uh, the six-figure bets coming in besides this one. All right, shifting gears going up to the Big Ten. Big game, Michigan State at Iowa. Now, Raphael, it's usually a red flag when you have an unranked team favored over a ranked team, as Iowa is in this situation. However, I think the, the odds makers kind of shot their shot when they opened this line. Opened Iowa at minus seven, uh, which I thought was really aggressive. And we've been seeing that number steadily coming down. Uh, it's five and a half at some books, six at a lot of books. Uh, what, what do you see when you look at these two teams? I see movement continue. I would not be shocked if it closes around five, five and a half. I just thought it was way, 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 way too high. I understand it. Uh, Iowa probably the better team. Michigan State uh, on a little bit of disappointment. But wow, that's a big number uh, on that one. I, I made the number like around four, four and a half, and I put a big question mark on it, knowing that I might be a little bit off on that one. And I was a point, point and a half off. I can see this one going down. If you were able to get six and a half on Michigan State, that's a great number for you guys. But if you're looking to bet Iowa, I would say wait, wait, wait. It's at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time tip off, so you might see some line movement. I see Spartan money coming in. Iowa wins this one, but I don't think they cover. All right. So, you know, we know this time of year momentum is critical in March Madness. All right. You see teams get hot, play above their heads for a few weeks, and go on these magical runs. You know, this is kind of a good example here where we have Michigan State, they're one and five against the spread in their last six games. They're one and four straight up in their last five. They've been really, really shaky. They lost at home to Illinois their last time out. Conversely, I was coming off a really nice upset win at Ohio State. They dominated that game, won by double digits in a tough venue uh, for teams to roll in and, and pick up a road win. Iowa's won four out of five. So when you handicap this matchup, how much – Credit and consideration do you give to momentum? Michigan State's not playing well. Iowa is. Lean Iowa. And how much do you, do you look at the matchups, historical trends, uh, those ancillary things that aren't reflected by how the teams are playing right now? Which, which do you think is more important this time of year? I look at the matchups because don't forget, Iowa beat Michigan State by 30 last year. Uh, I, I don't remember the date of what it was, but that, that's a big butt whooping that they get. And again, I just don't like the way Michigan State, you said they lost at home to Illinois, but don't forget, they lost to Wisconsin at home. I think it was earlier in the month. So they, the home field or home court, I think, holds on this one. I think Iowa, if they can control the boards like they did last time and don't give up the horrible turnovers like they did in the first half of their last game, uh, I see them winning. But again, Back door, I think it's going to be open this whole game uh, along. Michigan State's going to realize, hey, last time we played, they we beat us by 30. That's why I think that back door is going to be open all game long. Yeah, that's why it's important to read numbers, right? We, we've seen this number fall down all throughout the day because the sports books did open open with, with a poor number, really. I like Iowa. You like Iowa. But we don't like Iowa laying seven points at home to Michigan State. Yep. That's that's a little bit much. That's why it's, it's really important for betters to be able to understand how to read numbers, line movements, and understand why they're moving and what is moving them. All right. Third game that we're going to talk about is, in my opinion, easily the best game of the night. Uh, not just because I'm an old Big East guy, uh, being a Syracuse fan, but we have Villanova, top 10 Villanova team, heading up to Connecticut, going, rolling into stores, for a big, big game in the Big East, uh, Connecticut opened as the favorite in this game. Again, they're number, two, they're ranked number twenty-one. Villanova is ranked number six. Connecticut, you know that that home crowd is going to be a factor in this matchup. Uh, what do you see when you look at these two Big East rivals? I see a game that the number is dead on. I made this number one. It got jumped up to two. This is one of these games that we've talked about many, many times. You just want to sit back and watch it because I think it's going to be a defensive battle. At the end of the game, it wouldn't surprise you on who wins this game. I think it'd be a bigger surprise if it's a very, very low scoring game, maybe in the 50s. I think that's the only thing that might shock me. Totals at 137. I made a total 135, 136. So it's pretty much right there. This game is going to be fantastic. Connecticut playing really well off not uh, not just one home win, but back to back home wins. Xavier Hall. Uh, but then at the same time, the road team's been playing some really good ball. Number is perfect. Like I said you don't have to bet every key game, every TV game, just because it's on TV and the kids are sleeping and the wife's finally away. Bet this game. No, just sit back, enjoy it, uh, and research this game on maybe who uh, Connecticut's playing next. 
who Villanova is playing next. Research that game while you watch this game. This game is just dead on a numbers perfect. I don't see any value on this one. Yeah, Villanova's beat Connecticut five straight times. And, you know, we've talked about this in the past. You know my stance on Villanova. They're one of those teams I just don't bet against. I bet, I bet on them, uh, uh, but I refuse to bet against them. Their last time out against Georgetown, they were a 20-point favorite. I didn't love them in the role. Not at all. They only ended up winning by 11 or 12 points. Didn't didn't dominate that game. And never came close to covering the spread in that game. But you know what? I'm okay with not betting against them. Because I've seen them go out and lay a 35-point beating on uh, on good teams before. So it wouldn't surprise me if they rolled into stores and got this win. Connecticut's going to be playing with some edge. Like I said, they lost five straight in the series. They're playing with some revenge. I feel like they're due. Uh, but, to, but your point's dead on. Sometimes the best bets are the ones that you don't make. I think this is one that we sit back, watch, and gather information uh, for down the road. Because, again, these are two of the best teams in the Big East. They may meet again in the Big East tournament here in a couple of weeks. So how this game develops, how this game plays out, could give us valuable information for how to bet these two teams moving forward. All right, last game of the night. It's not a top 25 matchup, but it's um, a, a marquee matchup from a conference that we both really like, right? Uh, Mountain West, we have San Diego State. Heading into Boise State, uh, I think these are the two best teams in the – well, Colorado State can make their argument, but they haven't played well enough on the road for me to really be convinced. And honestly, there's no denying what Boise State has been able to do. I think they're 18-2 and two straight up in their last 20 games. They've really been having kind of a charmed season. They're playing at home in a game where home court advantage has been huge, right? We, all, we know how well the Aztecs play in their home gym. Boise State has a real nice home court advantage. I was a little surprised to see this number only come out at two. I was expecting it closer to four, four and a half. Uh, Raphael, what, what do you see in this Mountain West matchup? If they didn't lose to Colorado State in overtime at home a couple weeks ago, this number would have been three, maybe three and a half. I think four would have been a little bit too high just because of the respect that San Diego State has on college basketball betting. So uh, three, three and a half if, the, if Boise State beats Colorado State a couple weeks ago. They lost at home. I think it was 74-77. But let's talk about the last time these two teams played each other and San Diego State. The, total, the numbers were the same waistline my twin brother has, between 42 and 37. That was the final score. 42-37 was that game. It was the most ugliest game, and I've said this multiple times with you. There's one thing about San Diego State in football and college basketball. You don't bet the That's over the in any of their games. And last time these two teams played, we saw it. I agree with you. I think Boise State, their home court, uh, is really, really exciting. It's, and it's been night and day. I mean, I remember going to Boise State and watching UNLV play there one time, and they had no home court uh, advantage. It was, bare, it was empty. I think there was more UNLV fans at the time there. Now it's like totally 360. Uh, and now they, they pack the house. The students are there. I like Boise State. Again, I think you're getting great value laying minus two. Definitely, because this one, again, three, three and a half. If they win against Colorado State at home, they easily had no challenge against Utah State. They easily took care of Air Force, which that Air Force win, they put up 85 points against that Air Force zone defense. Uh, that's a big, big, big number if you don't watch Air Force play basketball. I like Boise State on this one. I think they win easily. I'm not saying double digits. I'm, oh, I do want to play the over in this game. 118 right now, it's telling me to bet it, but just sit back and just enjoy the total on that one. But I think the Broncos are to play today. I agree with you. I was on the Aztecs on Saturday uh, at Fresno State. Fresno State is the team that I've been selling. I just don't think that team is, is as good as its record indicates. And San Diego State was able to come through with a real nice uh, road win against one of the top tier teams in the Mountain West. Are they going to win two in a row on the road, though? Uh, I don't think so. San Diego State threw kind of a quirk in their schedule. They've only played seven true road games this season including that win at Fresno State. They're only three and four on the road. They're not the same team when they play outside their home gym. Boise State, I, I'm calling it right now. They're one of these teams. I don't think they're going to win their conference tournament. They may even end up being the number one seed in the Mountain West. But this is a team that's just having, again, really a magical regular season run. They've been, they've been fantastic through most of the year. But I have a feeling get them on a neutral court, play, you know, playing with all that pressure on them. Uh, I don't think that they're going to make the NCAA tournament, but that doesn't mean that they don't have a few big wins in them. And I think that tonight is going to be, is going to be one of those situations. It's a statement game for Boise State. Uh, I think the number on this game is short. 
and I don't trust San Diego State on the road. So, all right, there's Raphael. Five te- there's five teams in the Mountain West that would not shock me that win that conference tournament. And I'll even throw UNLV in there if they hit the three ball and continue to play a good defense. Wyoming can win it. Colorado State can win it. San Diego State, Boise State. There's five teams in the Mountain West that would not shock me if they cut the nets down on conference tournament. Yeah, it really should be a multiple bid league. I don't, I don't know how that's going to play out. Everything is relative to how some teams – uh, uh, manage their own conference tournaments. There's always a, a spoiler or two or a bid stealer or two. But the Mountain West definitely should be a multiple bid league this year. And I tell you what, they have several teams in that league that could go toe-to-toe with anybody in the ACC, SEC, Big Ten, and give them a lot of problems in the in the opening round of the NCAA tournament. So, all right, Raphael, in homage to uh, to Tuesday, we're going to give two free plays. So you go first, Give the give the people something that they want. All right, I'm going to give you the one we're discussing about, the San Diego State-Boise State. I want to play the over so bad, but why is this total <laughs> moving toward the un- the over? I'll take the under at 121 on this game. I think it's just going to be a defensive battle if San Diego State wants to win this game. They need the same type of game that we just saw a couple weeks ago, a 42-37 type of game. I would not be shocked if we see like a 53-50 uh, type of game, 103 points scored. I'll take the under because it's creeping up. I would say, wait, you might get 121.5 or 122 on this total. It's a late game. So I like the under and the Boise State, uh, San Diego State. And then the next one. I'm going to take the Kansas-Kansas State game over. Uh, these two teams really don't like each other. We always see some bad blood on this one. Free throws might push this one over. This total's dropping. Here's another one. Wait, you probably get 141, 141 and a half. It's 142 right now. I'll take the Kansas State-Kansas game over uh, 142. But again, wait, wait, wait. It's a kind of a late game. I think it's a 9 o'clock uh, Eastern Standard Time game. Uh, the people who lost in the morning or in Champions League soccer, and they may be chasing, so they may be uh, changing that number. So I say wait, but give me the Kansas State-Kansas game over the total. All right, for my free play, I'm going to go back to one of the games that we discussed as well. Uh, but it was a game that we obviously have some disagreement on. I like Florida. I know I'm a sucker. I'm a sucker for the Gators for some reason. They can't shoot, and they've let me down. Pretty much every time I've, I've picked them in one of these free play videos. Uh, but I don't think they have a letdown. I think that they are going to carry over a little bit of momentum. Watched Arkansas against Tennessee. A lot of shakiness from that Razor, Razorback team. Uh, they ended up pulling out that win, for Doc, which was Doc Sports. Eight-unit college basketball game of the year. So congratulations to, to Max, their college basketball handicapper, for that eight-unit winner on Saturday. Uh, but Arkansas is not the same team when they when they don't play in their home gym. And I have no problem betting against probably my least favorite player in college basketball, and that's Chris Likes, the point guard for Arkansas. Uh, I think the guy's a loser. And, you know, we, we've talked about this before. He transferred from Miami, right? So you don't just look at the impact that, that he has on his new team, which is middling and mediocre at best. Look how much better Miami is playing without him on the roster this year, okay? If they're near the top of the ACC, they're probably an NCAA tournament team. Uh, I have no problem betting against guys like that anytime, anywhere. Uh, Florida, as long as they can shoot better than, you know, 22% from three-point range tonight, uh, I think they got another big win in them. So I'm going to go ahead and take the Gators. So, all right, that's what we got. He's Raphael Esparza. I'm Robert Faringo. Don't forget to take advantage of the free $60 that we are offering in links above and below. You can use that for any handicapper in any sport towards any package that you want at Doc Sports. Be sure to check back later in the week for more college basketball free play videos. And be sure to go to Doc Sports YouTube page to check out videos from the other handicappers. Again, giving out free plays in a variety of sports. He's Rafael Esparza. I'm Robert Faringo. Carpe diem. Good luck.